All, All right. right. <laughs> All right. Welcome, everybody, to another exciting edition of the Technical Steering Committee for Hyperledger. Uh, this is Dan Middleton, your chair, and uh, driving the agenda here will be Tracy Kurt, Community Architect. Uh, it looks like we've got a uh, relatively light agenda today, so I don't want to keep people on unnecessarily as we reach the end of it, but we do have maybe one or two topics that we'll, we'll add uh, ad hoc here. Uh, from the time that the original uh, agenda was published. And uh, with that said, if you want to take us into the event reminders, Tracy. Sure, definitely. So uh, first off, uh, we have the Hatchfest is coming up next week in Montreal. Uh, as a reminder, that does uh, conflict with our TSC meeting. And last week, we decided that we will not be having a TSC meeting next week. Um, so our next TSC meeting will be October 11th. Uh, we also have the APAC Hackfest is coming up the week of March 4th. Uh, we're still working on all the details there, so those details will be coming soon. And lastly, we have the uh, Hyperledger Global Forum in December in Basel, Switzerland. Uh, the schedule is announced. I believe um, we just had an announcement that the prices are going up, so if you haven't already uh, gotten your uh, ticket in, maybe now is a good time to, to think about that. I, I think it's uh, either the end of today or Monday. I can't remember what the day is, but uh, it's soon. So, uh, you know, if you're interested, uh, have a look at that. Yeah, I think the announcement that I saw was uh, the 30th is, I think, the, the last date for registration. There you go. And it's not the last day for registration, just last day before the prices go up the last day for cheaper registration. Exactly. All right, so the next item on our agenda then is the, uh, I put on the Hackfest agenda planning. I know we did this last week in the, the call and we, we got a lot of great uh, proposed topics. I uh, want to make sure that we have some, some time just to, if there's anything else that needs to be proposed or um, also to remind people that if they have proposed topics, uh, they can start slotting those into the agenda as well. Uh, so again, the, the Montreal Hackfest next week. Um, so that's that particular item. Yeah, it looks like uh, kind of on cadence with normal as we approach the, the dates, the, the agenda starts filling itself out kind of quadratically. So it looks usually pretty empty as we so we're a few weeks out, and then as we get close, it, it starts to, to fill up. And it looks like we've gotten a lot of topics added since uh, the agenda was fairly empty this time last week. Um, I also threw on, started to throw on some, some ideas for just uh, fun time afterwards, which is not as important as what we want to accomplish while we're uh, actually at the, the meeting proper. But it is a uh, you know, fun part of being in the, the community. So feel free to think of things for uh, after hours things as well. All right, and I think uh, if nobody has anything to add on that, besides what uh, you can do offline yourself with the document, uh, we can take a look at Caliper. Uh, I noticed as I was checking for the update earlier this week and then up through this morning, it does not look like that has been filled out. Do we have anybody from the, the Caliper team on the call? All right, I'm gonna take that silence as a big no. Um, so for the rest of the steering committee, uh, I just wanna observe that the Caliper project, when it was added, uh, part of, the, part of the, the guidance was that, that they should be working closely with the, the performance and scale working group. Uh, and I don't think that we really saw that happen. Things fell away pretty quickly. Uh, and as I observe the, the repo headed into this, uh, I also don't see a lot of activity there. So that does make me a little bit worried for the health of that project. I saw Mark is online. Maybe he can give some comments. I was, um, you know, just, just getting ready to say something, but thank you. Um, no, Dan, Dan's been very active in the performance and scale working group as well. Um, and so, yeah, we haven't heard anything back from Caliper whenever we ping them. 
Um, the other comment I was going to make is I don't know if we, as a TSC, you know, for the agenda, we should send out something more official to like each group that they need to report at it, you know, you need to be on the TSC call because I don't know if anyone on the caliper team actually comes to the TSC calls or is on the TSC mailing list. If they're not, then they're not going to see that they were due for a report today. Yeah, sure. that's a good point. I kind of wonder if, if a basic expectation for uh, maintainers of a project or leaders of a working group is that they're subscribed to the, the TSC mail list. Yeah, and I just wanted to add, yesterday I uh, was on the Caliper Contributors chat channel, and I did uh, put a reminder out there for that. Um, and I've also seen on that chat channel a couple of folks who are requesting to become uh, committers for the Caliper project. So, um, you know, I don't know. So far, we haven't seen a response back to that request uh, from the Caliper community. Uh, maybe we need to reach out via email. Uh, and see, but definitely something to, to keep an eye on. And, and, and back to something you said earlier, Dan, initially, um, when the caliper was trying to become a project, they were placed under the PSWG for, a, um, you know, to sort of shepherd them through the process and wait till things were synced enough that it was appropriate. At that point, um, my belief is that you know, that that relationship or guidance sort of ended. I'm happy to start that up again if we think we should do that as a TSC. Thank you. Um, just a, uh, as a general comment, is it possible perhaps that we require the reports to be early and have people confirm that they're, they'll be at the meetings before we uh, put updates on the meeting agenda? Because it seems like we get a lot of, you know, missed or or late updates. Yeah. So if you look at the project update schedule, you will see that project updates are supposedly due on Monday um, before the TSC call. Um, that has not really been the case. Uh, most most of the time, we've needed to send out reminders. So I'm perfectly fine with that. It was the original intention. So um, yeah. There. Uh, I mean, I think, and I chatted with Todd about this um, a while back. This is Chris. Um, I, I think that it's it's in fact likely people are not subscribed to the TSC mailing list, and they don't get these notices, and they don't see this, and they just forget. Um, um, and so, I I think that we need to make sure that we're doing. Um, you know, that, that we're not sort of, you know, pretending that everybody is tightly, you know, paying attention to what's going on at the TSC. A lot of people just get focused on doing whatever they're doing with their projects. We do um, ping people one-on-one. -on -one, so it does go out in the agenda the week before. It's in the wiki calendar. And then we reach out to people through email and through chat. Okay, good. I mean, but it's so, okay, that's interesting. I did notice that the caliper commits have subsided since about, August, but that's summertime and, you know, um, I don't know if that's a function of the project's health or, or what, but um, it had been pretty active up through July. Maybe we can add the project maintainers into the CC list when send the RTSA meeting agenda. I feel like there's a lot of already active outreach. So, so like uh, like Tracy and, and Todd have mentioned, there's there's a lot that that we don't see that the community architects and and uh, the rest of the Linux Foundation staff are doing to uh, to reach people directly. Um, and certainly send out some some notice afterwards that that we've got some expectation that people are subscribed to the TSC. Uh, I think that you know we can be somewhat accommodating to the fact that people are are focused sometimes on mm -hmm. on you know what what they're trying to actually do for development uh but you know if we see something repeated where where people are basically going dark then that does seem to fall on us as one of our responsibilities so you know i don't think we're there yet with caliper uh like 
like Chris mentioned, the, the commits have fallen off and, and they're not here to give their updates. So those are definitely flags, but I expect that we will see some of them at Montreal next week. Uh, and so uh, maybe we can, we can figure out what's going on at that point, but uh, you know, we can, we can certainly be thinking before our next meeting uh, what our options are if, if a project does go completely dark for some period of time. I have, I have to say I've been quite surprised at the, the number of, of teams that haven't turned up with updates. That's really quite surprised me. I mean, my expectation is that people would at least let you know if they're not going to be turning up. And, you know, it's understandable if people are busy, but like not even turning up is kind of surprising. Yep. Okay, so uh, I think we probably needn't belabor that more. Well, one, one quick comment, if, if I may. Um, would we want to send mail to the mailing list for each project rather than the, the chair, in case the chair is on vacation or something, then other people in the team can see it? It does seem that having some sort of policy as to what the contact mechanism is to not just the maintainers, but to the project as a whole would, would be good though. I would echo Dan's sentiment that the staff and the community architects have been doing a great job of reaching out individually and that's been really helpful. Okay. True, so, but I, uh, think, I think Mark's suggestion to to mail the the mailing list as opposed to individuals actually kind of makes a, a bit of sense. Yeah, yeah, um, I agree with that. Uh, so yeah, let's let's do that, but let's also maybe start to set the expectation with with projects that they are subscribed to the TSC list. Um, it seems like we're maybe a more cohesive community if if we're all at least attached to one common communication channel. All right, well, uh, we do not have a working group update for this week. Uh, after we get back from Montreal, we will have an update from the healthcare working group. Uh, and we've got a, uh, a last minute agenda item for them uh, at the end of today. But uh, next on the list is the bug bounty discussion. Is, uh, it looks like Dave is on to, to help take us through that. There's my uh, mute button. Yeah, hi, good morning. Um, so we've had a discussion on the mailing list over the last couple of weeks um, about what to do about our bug bounty with Hyperledger, or sorry, with uh, Hacker One for the next year. Um, the choices were to um, continue paying them the money that we did for uh, paid support and also to drop down to just doing email support, not paying them the money, and relying more heavily on the security team to handle triage. And it sounds to me like the discussion went in that direction, and I think that's appropriate. Um, I just wanted to open it up to questions uh, for right now, and then uh, ask for a quick vote if we're all kind of in agreement. So is that the absolute lowest cost way that still keeps us some connection to hacker one well we'll still have connection to them like we'll still use their platform we still have all of the tools that we have been using in you know over the last year it's just that when reports come in nobody on their staff will jump into triage and handle everything we can use yeah, their platform actually triage and handle anything this is what well this we did point, <laughs> Yeah, I, I agree with you, Chris. Yeah, so we had like 22 reports come in. Um, only three of them were valid. They sort of headed off some of them. Most of them, I, I said, you know, hey, we need our scope document. And so yeah, I mean, we wound up handling most of it. We paid them because we assumed that there would be a lot of reports. And I was yeah. hedging more on in a conservative way. But it turns out, you know, we didn't really need it. So that's why my recommendation is to just drop down to email support. Yeah, and I, that's, yeah. I was going to say, we've made good friends there. So um, if we need help, we can ask. It's, it's not like they're, it's adversarial or anything, right? 
Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't anticipate us needing uh, any help though. And uh, it would be great for us to solidify the security team through, you know, action, I guess. So yeah, any other questions? Well, I mean, if there are no more, more questions, uh, it looked like we had a consensus on the mailing list. So I would ask for a quick vote to, to not pay for support and to drop to email support and rely on our security team. I'm in favor of that. Yep. Agree. Yep. Agree. Same here. All right. Anybody opposed? All right. That's the well, decision. Well, great. Anybody on the security team expect an email from me? I'm going to try to rally everybody in, in uh, Montreal so that we can all meet each other. And Great. thank you. All right, thanks, Dave. All right, next on the agenda here, we have uh, some topics to discuss around a social impact working group. Uh, I think maybe Marta will be leading that up. See Marta on the thread here, and I know. As soon, <clears throat> sorry, as soon as I can. Unmute my phone. Yeah, uh, I will be happy to. to... Heads up normally so we can take a <laughs> to find that. Yeah, sorry for that. Um, yeah. So uh, the we would like to ask the steering committee uh, to review and make suggestions, and if 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 possible, maybe even give a vote over launching a social impact working group. The background for this is uh, we've been working with several people, uh, both members and very, very open source community of non-for-profits, uh, people connected to all sort of institutions that have um, social impact or work on social impact. And they've been all saying that Hyperledger seems like a great place to incubate and to discuss and uh, do work on how can blockchain impact uh, social social situations, how can blockchain help. Um, <clears throat> we've been informally meeting, or the, it was actually the community driven by Rick Frogs and Alyssa Worley, uh, Rick from Mercy Courts and Alyssa from um, Center. So they've been informally gathering uh, over, over the phone with the broad community working uh, of, uh, they had a face-to-face -face, uh, last week with some of the people on the phone and some of the people um, on uh, uh, in person in Accenture offices in New York. Um, and it seems like this group has really a lot of traction. I understand that there is a discussion about where should uh, the uh, community working groups fall under or vertical working groups fall under, uh, but it would be great to have this group approved or discussed uh, by TSC now as we don't want to lose that wonderful momentum that we've had uh, and uh, let them really organize themselves. They would love to have a face-to-face -face meeting their global forum as well. So there's a lot okay, I, I lost a little bit of that audio, but... Um... Uh, hopefully others got it. Otherwise, what it sounded to me was was Marta was just as she was trailing off there, teeing up uh, the discussion for us. Uh, a lot of momentum with uh, the stakeholders that that she's pulled together and, and wants to keep that momentum. Uh, I hope people have had an opportunity to uh, read through that and, and have some opinions for us. So <clears throat> just in looking through this, this is really... Um, it appears that this is a proposal specifically for examining usages and driving those usages in a particular domain, um, as opposed to the sociological, anthropological study of what the impact is of, of blockchains. Um, and and I guess I would um, sort of in that vein, in, you know, the, the deliverables are consistent with that, seem appropriate. Um, but I'm kind of curious also about um, in particular in this domain about um, kind of community formation around these and should that not also be a part of um, enabling these kinds of systems and part of the examination? 
and by community, I mean community of users of the tech of the usages and technologies. Marta, are you on still? Uh, yes, I am still okay. on. Sorry, I was trying to find a better spot for uh, for my internet. Um, so, so my first question is just a, just a clarification that this really is. A, oops. I think Marta has now entered the matrix. <laughs> uh, is is there anyone else um, who's been working with with Marta on the proposal that can maybe uh, also help discuss it here? I think I found a better internet now. Let's try it. All right, it sounds a little more stable. Great. Uh, so the first question was to clarify that this group is. Uh, focused on deliverables uh, and uh, looking at how uh, blockchain can help in social uh, impact situations like non-for-profits, uh, aid delivery and so on, rather than soci sociological and anthropological aspects of it, uh, of blockchain. Yes, this is correct. Uh, the first uh, product that uh, the group would like to put together is uh, um, use of opportunity matrix. Uh, Seems like we've uh, lost out on audio again. Uh, no, I finished talking. Okay. Um, and I didn't get the second question, so, so if you could repeat so that. The second question was really, especially in this sort of non, um, not for profit, nonprofit, and these kinds of applications. Um, there's no um, uh, one of the aspects that that needs to be considered here is how that community of users comes into existence on a part of it. So I see, I see a lot with the, the sort of applications and the potential usages on that. Um, just, I guess, my real question is, what are the unique characteristics of the social impact usages, um, and how will those be um, approached and addressed? It, it seems like a particularly it, it seems like a domain that's that's radically different from um, the great announcement that Walmart is using um, blockchain for doing all food tracking. Right, that um, it just seems like a very set different set of kind of constraints on the problem, and I'm curious about how those kind of constraints will be pulled out. This is a very good question. Um, I think that uh, indeed it's a very different domain. It's a very broad domain. And um, the need for this group emerged from the fact that there is no place where we could start across all of these working groups. This is something that I've been consistently hearing is a place where we can start thinking about solutions rather than just discussing the um, the constraints or problems and then not doing anything about it so addressing those constraints and there are obviously you know things like uh, last mile problems uh, lack of internet uh, all of uh, aspects of that there are some good examples and uh, that we can uh, uh, work with like the uh, world bank uh, the world bank project uh, world uh, food project as well uh, these are not done in Hyperledger, but uh, or with Hyperledger frameworks. Uh, but these uh, are some of the interesting uh, aspects that we can look at. And I think that we have the main expertise, but both from uh, non-for-profits and companies that are just simply interested in helping society uh, that will uh, help address those problems. Thank you. That sounds right. The, 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 okay, I wanted to ask I, the, I, your No, questions. I think I think that's ex that's exactly what I, what I was a little bit concerned about was just making sure that that this working group, because you're because the domain of interaction is going to be so much different. Um, I'm really curious, in particular, on the technical side of what comes out as requirements for the platforms. Um, you know, what when you look at your at this domain. I'd like to see one of the deliverables be a report back to like the architecture working group or something about gaps that you see. 
um, in the technology for addressing it. Yeah, that's that's definitely something that uh, everyone wants to do. They want to, the, as you can see from the charter, they want to really work closely with some of the uh, working groups. I think also performance and scalability will be impacted as we look at uh, very constrained environments. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's a good opportunity to bring some images. Well, just to add to that, this is Nathan. At the Sovereign Foundation, we have an identity for all council that does similar work in this space. And we've found it very helpful when they produce requirements type documentation for the technical team. Um, and like Mick mentions, one of the difficulties that's often happened is that the team itself that's working on kind of these use cases um, has had trouble articulating all of the, the requirements that they have in a way that helps the technical team pick them up and develop them. So um, from the TSC side, one of the things that we'll want to watch is making sure that um, we're, that there, there are good connections between the projects and these technical reports. So that instead of them you know, publishing them and them not going anywhere, that there's actually some actionable steps to support some of the things that are required. Hey, Nathan, does that identity for all committee function kind of like a conscience? at uh, Sovereign? I mean, is that where a lot of the, the privacy protection requirements comes out of? Yeah, th it, exactly. And a lot of the requirements documents um, that they generate talk a lot about the exploitation of disadvantaged populations, how offline use cases are so important, and the discrimination that occurs when you make assumptions about the, the technology platforms for the client code and things like that. Um, so it's been enormously helpful for some of the requirements to the indie platform. Um, to have those folks regularly meeting and giving us feedback about what's actually happening on the ground. Um, Silas here. Um, my concern with this would be that uh, from the point of view of a community of implementation projects, that is social good really a domain at all? Um, so, I mean, I think you're acknowledging that in the breadth um, but I'm just wondering if we were to compare with the idea of picking a particular area, whether it's remittance or whether it's some kind of um, aid supply chain use case um, and uh, spinning up a working group or something like that, that looks specifically at that use case. It, it seems that might be more focused um, and deliver clearer um, specifications and, um, and relationships. What do we gain by having a single umbrella that lumps together social good? Not to mention the fact that not everyone will entirely agree on what a social good is. Uh, is there something maybe I'm missing about uh, why it makes sense to have a social good umbrella? You know, that that's actually um, a, a good lead into another aspect that we should be thinking about right now, which is this, this working group is one of, of several that I think are being explored right now that, that we could think of as sector or vertical specific working groups. Um, something that might be called in other, in other organizations, uh, like a special interest group. And it seems like a, a lot of the interest in, in these groups come from business stakeholders that can help, um, help describe use cases and, and have discussions that explore the space. Um, and in a way that's, that is a little bit different than what you were getting at. I think Silas on, uh, from an implementation point of view, uh, that, uh, you know, we, we want to be focused, I think first and foremost in, in Hyperledger and being the, the place where coding happens. And so I wonder as we look at what could be a, a profusion of these special interest groups, whether we actually want to codify that as a slightly different structure than the technical working groups that we have. So maybe in a way that, you know, we can enable them to uh, grow at a lot of these working, these uh, special interest groups. Um, and at the same time, not uh, lose the part of our culture that's around development. I don't necessarily see Hyperledger as just a development machine. I think it, you know, development without the understanding the social impacts of what you're doing is, is a dangerous thing. 
Yeah, so certainly we wouldn't be looking yeah, at one. not uh, doing special interest groups, just that, that we have maybe a slightly different governance structure around um, these groups that, that might be a degree or two removed from technical working, pro technical deliverables. Right, but, uh, but in this case, I mean, the working groups in general are doing things that are, that are kind of white paper based. You know, if you, wanted, if you want to be focused on code, go create a project. Um, I, I think, um, you know, what we're getting out of the identity and architecture groups are white papers, right? Describing concepts. And um, yeah, it's, it's technology, but it's really about sort of abstracting out what's happening across other domains and feeding into the technology groups. And I see, I, again, I see this as, as exactly the kind of thing that I'd like to see more of, which is somebody that can feed concrete requirements back into the projects. Um, and, and it's that relationship between the working groups and the technologies that I think we're not exploiting well enough right now already. So I don't have I, I don't have a problem with uh, non-code related um, uh, working groups like you described, but I guess my issue is uh, what what about projects of social good uh, make them part of the same problem space? Is there really connectivity between those disparate use cases? So Silas, to add. Marty, you've gone very quiet. Um, can you hear me better now? I can't really hear you, Marta. Um, um, can, you talk, can you dump your comments in chat, perhaps? What I would add from the, the, my perspective, having watched a group similar to this function inside of the Sovereign Foundation, is that these groups are quite accustomed to working with one another. They understand their use case differences and their overlaps fairly well. Um, and it's similar to what you would see in say the healthcare working group, that even though there are very distinct differences between say insurance use cases and you know, provider, healthcare provider use cases and supply chain cases and administrative you know, data cases, they, they understand the problem domain collectively and they know kind of where each use case is playing and they're pretty good about um, trying to make those distinctions. Um, though it often comes across in what, you know, no vertical specific jargon. Um, I think what you'll find is this group is, is pretty functional in terms of trying to decompose that problem. Um, and uh, the reports will have some concrete steps that apply to all of them. So I, I don't have any uh, opposition to the idea of kind of grouping some of that together especially if as a technical group or an architecture group, we can give them some guidance about how to separate the problem to better map to the technology. So to play devil's advocate here, um, and maybe it ties back to Dan's point a little bit, is, you know, do we need something different within the Hyperledger organization? This is a technical steering committee. And if this group is off looking at something that's not necessarily technical, you know, do we need a different structure within Hyperledger to, to sort of run that and, and the groups would still work together, but it, it's not, you know, purely a technical nature like the architecture group, the performance and scale group. Um, yeah, I think if we look at this in the context of, let's say we've got the social impact group now, maybe we've got a banking group, we end up, we've got a healthcare group already, maybe we have a supply chain group, we have a lot of things that are gonna bring in probably business stakeholders uh, with important viewpoints, things that we do want to attract and understand, but we could very quickly become overwhelmed with, with those uh, business level kinds of discussions at the expense of really focusing in more on the delivery of, of projects, which was kind of our original mission with, with Hyperledger. So again, I, I, that wouldn't be, you know, excluding those activities. It would just be that, you know, maybe we wrap those in a slightly lighter uh, governance. Maybe we don't necessarily need quarterly updates from, um, you know, maybe ultimately two dozen different SIGs coming through. 
uh, that that we wouldn't necessarily discuss uh, in these TSC meetings. You still probably want to produce uh, re produce reports from them periodically, and, and we can review those offline. I understand from some earlier discussions that over in the uh, the Apache Foundation that there's there's quite a few projects and SIGs and working groups, and that those are generally reviewed offline and really only escalated where there's exceptional cases. Yeah, I think I, <clears throat> I, I, the thing to think about uh, would be reporting structure. I, I mean, the question is if there is a, an issue inside one of these groups, and by the way, my, my staff uh, will garden these groups, these special interest groups a bit more directly than we might with say architecture or identity, um, just because you know, we view it as as pretty important that um, we get more users through these kinds of efforts and more more use cases, more engagement with, with the business sector, and and meet them halfway. And and that there potentially is even value to these, even if they're not driving new requirements directly down to Fabric or Sawtooth, um, but simply in being able to meet many of these constituencies and the developers within those constituencies halfway. So that they can map their jargon, you know, as as uh, um, I think Mark Mark put it uh, to to our jargon, <laughs> um, and uh, uh, and and I think that's been useful in bringing all, uh, new new companies and and new developers in on the healthcare side, uh, and and maybe the public sector side, and and will be for the others that we launch. Um, but the reporting structure is still important, right? Um, uh, it really is. Does the TSC want to take responsibility and ownership if a problem emerges? Something we, as the hyperledger staff, can't solve directly. Um, uh, you know, or or is there a, another place within the organization into which they could report, kind of as a parallel to the TSC? Um, I will say I've mentioned it to Mark to uh, <clears throat> Dan O'Pry at the marketing committee, um, and. You know, any mention of you know, hey, do you want a, a new job to do? Uh, <laughs> um, you, you know, without with, with, without a lot of clarity on how much how many hours that means, how much work that actually means is, you know, not not something that they that he leapt at. But uh, um, you know, I think we can we can have a conversation like that. Well, the other thing that I'm wondering is, does it make sense for groups like this to have deliverables in the same way that? you know, maybe technical working groups are supposed to have deliverables? I, I think it ultimately does because um, uh, it, it helps keep them focused. I think if it were purely a talk shop, it would be, um, I, I, it would feel a little unguided. I think just for the sake of having a healthy community, um, you, you know, I, I, you, you know, to make it more than a coffee clutch, would be would be pretty important um and that that doesn't mean it has to be specific deliverables it can still be we expect you to write reports we expect you to um you know look for opportunities when there's code to spin that out into labs or into their own separate projects but um but yeah uh some focus would be essential i think our experience in the sovereign community is when there's not a lot of good communication and back and forth between the maintainers and between these interest groups either the interest groups get very frustrated they're not being heard or the developers get very frustrated when you know the things they're building aren't useful so I, I i like the idea that there is some sort of tight coupling or tight communication even if we decided to restructure some of the way these groups are reported having some regular interaction helps keep these groups grounded in the technical realities and also keeps us grounded in the, the business realities of who's going to use our systems Yeah, I, I mean, Nate, I, 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 I agree with that. But then again, you know, again, to Dan's point, I mean, and, and maybe not everybody's in agreement on this, but and that and that's fine. But, you know, I mean, we primarily are about building stuff here. Right. And yes, we want to make sure that we're getting the appropriate requirements and so forth channeled into the various projects. But um, that again, that actually hasn't been happening. As far as I can tell, you know, we haven't heard from any of the uh, sort of the uh, industry vertical working groups, you know, we need to have X, Y, or Z. Um, if it's happened, it, it, I, I, I definitely miss that. I'm sure there's been conversations like that, but uh, again, I think the focus of the working group should be some sort of technical deliverable, you know, along the lines of the white paper, the architecture, 
you know, the, the performance and scale paper and so forth, those are, you know, those are technical deliverables. And so that I think that clearly falls under our, our purview here. Um, I, I, I agree that, you know, having, you know, having teams, you know, working groups check in and give us a readout on what's going on, that would be useful. Um, maybe it doesn't need to be quarterly and maybe it, you know, I don't know, uh, but, um, Again, I mean, we can be overwhelmed with having working groups for every possible industry vertical and every possible, um, you know, sort of angle that somebody might want to consider, whether it's social impact or uh, anything else. And I do worry that then we end up focusing more on the not not really the core mission of the of the organization. And how this has led to focus to, sorry, second what um, Chris has just said. I think that's important, really. It's of paramount importance that there's some output coming out of uh, the social impact working group, for example. And that's what impacts are all about. Impacts are there to measure um, the effect on different aspects of society, whether you're looking at an industry vertical, for example and any gaps that are identified and any use cases to make things better. So the pain points are being observed and discussed, not measured in terms of how much, <laughs> but in terms of, um, yeah, you know, these are the impacts we identify and how can we make things better? And that is the outputs of these working groups, which then become inputs to the various projects in terms of high level use cases an impact statement um, you know, pain points identified. And from that, the different projects can sift through, analyze and determine how the projects can be improved based on these identified impacts um, from these working groups. So I think it, it would benefit us all if we can structure it and report, as Brian has said, in the right way so that it's effective and of value to the entire hyperledger, and um, you might say consortia, <clears throat> which is more or less ourselves and the TAC. <laughs> yeah, that's also a good point. And uh, I think maybe we can start with a more general like uh, user case uh, working group that will deliver like the best practice in uh, adopting uh, hyperledger techniques in these uh, user cases. And uh, if, that results in um, like a lot of um, technical issues in some specific area, like uh, the healthcare or uh, social impact, then we can incubate a new uh, working group more specifically. Well, we, we had a requirements gathering working group, but it kind of spun down and, and didn't, didn't, didn't seem to go anywhere. And I think that's partly because being too disconnected from either a specific framework or from the, the use cases in which they're operating uh, meant that there wasn't really a there there, right? Um, and, and we do have, you know, 10 different technology stacks now. And so having a working group to collect requirements for, for those different uh, pieces of technology is kind of, you know, it's, it, it doesn't, doesn't work as well as if it were, you know, gathering requirements for, for just one framework. Um, I just want, I want this group to consider that there is substantial value to these working groups um, if they, generate content and reports and, and, and useful output, but even if they don't generate brand new requirements to the underlying um, frameworks. I mean, um, you could say it's because <laughs> Fabric and Sawtooth are actually pretty, pretty generalized and mature that they haven't needed to drive a specific requirement yet. Um, you could also say it's because many of these groups are still starting at a very um, uh, beginner place when it comes to thinking about how to use these technologies and haven't really been able to articulate, yes, we'll need you know, 10,050 transactions per second um, by you know, next year or, you know, or anything like that. Um, but some examples I'll cite, so the, on the healthcare working group, for example, a conversation about one particular use case, which is the breast milk supply chain, um, led to a group of motivated people saying, well, let's, let's actually see if we can reduce this down to a demo. Um, and so there's now a Hyperledger lab um, uh, with uh, CTO and BNA files <coughs> from Composer uh, and a bunch of active discussion about 
um, you know, how would we build this? What it would it look like? That sort of thing. And so that process of discovery, that process of like meeting them halfway and seeing what works, I think has been very useful for that healthcare community, even if that's something that's going to be repeated <laughs> in some respects um, on a on a supply chain uh, one, if we, you know, if and when we launch that or, or on the public sector one or, or the social impact one. So, um, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I still think we need these and, and writing code is not enough. We need to be recruiting, you know, this is partly about recruiting companies, but also really the developers at those companies ultimately um, to help build, uh, help us build code. Yeah, and I, I think that's, that's a good point. So maybe what, what I'd ask from, from the TSC as we, we wind up this conversation is to think uh, before we reach uh, Montreal or the October 11th meeting. Think about if there's uh, just a little nuance change to what we do with working groups that would facilitate special interest groups in in at least two aspects. One would be let's let's let the recruitment effort that that the staff is doing on our behalf be you know, more or less unfettered, so they can get a lot of these. A lot of the enthusiasm from the community going uh, without necessarily process from us, and then, you know, by the, sort of the, the complement of that is let's let's have a structure so that when there's exceptional things that need to be discussed, we're available uh, to facilitate that, but um, at the same time, not uh, start to lose our, our DNA on development. So with that, uh, we had one thing come on the, the mail list just prior to the meeting about the healthcare working group. Uh, and they're in the midst of a, um, of a, uh, a leader change there uh, where the, the prior leader, as I understood it, has, has moved on. And so they're looking to ratify a new leader. I don't think there's been enough time uh, for people to comment on the mail list. I don't expect from, from my understanding of that situation that this is a contentious issue, but uh, I want to allow enough time for that, but also uh, give it a little bit of air time here so that the ideas are at least socialized among us. Um, is there somebody from the, the healthcare working group on the call that can just tee that up and then uh, we'll give it a, a week or two to percolate and then we can we can ratify it after that? I don't think Rich was able to join us today um, because I know that uh, we had thought this would probably show up on the October 11th agenda, just given the timing of when that email came out. Mm -hmm. um, but if there's anybody else on the call. Um, um, this is great. I'm, oh, sorry. Most of the healthcare working group meetings, and I can answer specific questions. Uh, maybe if you just want to tee up for everybody the the I don't know the, the issue at hand here um, rich has been the interim leader in the last six weeks eight weeks um, and he would like to make that um, permanent and I believe that everybody um, is really glad to have rich he is very motivated he does a lot um, and, and as far as I can tell, there isn't any controversy about it. Okay, great. Well, I think that should be pretty simple then. Uh, it looks convenient that we can pick that up at the, the healthcare update then on the meeting of the 11th and, and ratify it at that point. I would, I would also like to point out that Rich uh, runs the Seattle meetup and um, I've dealt with them over the last uh, six months or so. And I've found uh, he's really organized. He really runs the Seattle meetup really well. So I know I don't have a vote, but I would definitely endorse uh, Rich and his uh, desire to lead this working group. Thanks, Ryan. That actually is very helpful to hear. And I know that Rich has also, um, they've discussed it within the healthcare working group. They've had it on like the last agenda uh, to talk about as well and uh, looking for feedback from the group. and. Uh, no negative feedback has been provided as of yet. So, um, you know, as Rain said, I think everybody's kind of uh, okay with it, right? Not having a, a, a difficulty with 
which becoming the chair. And okay. another people have been given a chance to stand, as I understand. Yes, uh, when Rich started talking about this, he opened it up for anybody who was interested to um, put their name in the hat, and I don't think anyone has. Okay, great. Well, we'll, uh, we'll finalize that then uh, at the uh, meeting on the 11th. Well, if there's no, if, if, I mean, if there's really no one else that's stepping up to, to do it, I don't know why we don't just vote now. And Yeah, I think the reason that I, I wouldn't want to take a vote right now is just that, first of all, I don't think it's going to hold anything up at the, the working group if, if it's not codified by the TSC. And then secondly, I think the first community-wide email that I saw about it was was the one that just happened less than 12 hours ago. So I would just want to make sure there's an appropriate amount of time for people to respond just in case there's some aspect that we haven't been made aware of, as li unlikely as that is. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, fair enough. I, I see it like shareware. We get them for free right now. Let's see how he does with this report, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope he's not malware then. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> that first update better be in on time. Rich has already been informed that there is an update. He was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> See what you've signed up for? Right. <laughs> okay. Well, we're down to the last few minutes here. Um, I don't know that there's anything new material to discuss on the community health working group. Uh, the two updates that I'm aware of is that there's been a little bit of discussion in the marketing committee about what we can do to um, uh, make sure that we're messaging things well. One, uh, one comment out of that was to make sure that all of the, the projects and working groups are aware of and referencing the, um, the COC that we have. Um, I can't even remember what that means. The uh, code of conduct. Thank you. The code of conduct. So, uh, that's something that we should all be aware of. Uh, and that's sort of the rules that, that keep everybody be behaving well. I think our, everybody already does behave in a, in a healthy way. Um, uh, but we're also beginning to looking for uh, maybe a, a more positive way too, to look at, at how we are uh, attracting and, and retaining people. And then the, the second thing is that the, the board will be taking up this discussion as well. And so maybe we'll have some feedback out of that meeting in, uh, in Montreal that we can talk about on the 11th. Hey, Brian had some stuff in the chat window, if you want to take a quick look, Dan. Uh, you no, know, it was just really, you know, I, it sounds like I mean, we didn't say it explicit, explicitly, but the social impact working group uh, I, is not being voted on. Uh, right. I think uh, typically we've we've taken a meeting or two to discuss things, and I think the uh, one issue at hand is to talk about do we set this up as a SIG and what does a SIG mean, uh, and that's something that I'm hoping that we can come out of. Can, can I urge you to consider taking a vote because uh, I mean, the proposal has been up for a couple of weeks now, and that's a community that wants to get started, and um, we can figure the social the, the sorry the reporting structure and whether we call it a SIG or working group in parallel. Because I don't think anyone sounded opposed to launching this group. I just don't want to, you know, hold hold back conversations and progress for what might feel like bureaucracy to the outside. So to say that another way, the idea is to to approve getting the group started. They can have their channels, their mailing list. We can get them set up so they can start meeting, and then the question of how we help these sorts of industry specific vertical groups produce content that's helpful to projects and projects you know, be supportive of these groups is a topic we want to continue to discuss and decide how we can help do a better job for them, not necessarily just specifically for the social impact group, but in general. And in, and in particular, there are other groups that will be beneficiaries of that discussion. I like this decomposition. Um, Dan, are you in favor? Uh, so on the unfortunately bureaucratic side, though, does that still have the wrinkle of if we create uh, email lists and so forth called working groups, and then we've got to switch those to SIGs afterwards, that that's just thrash for them? That that seems like a small issue for us to deal with compared to getting you know, a working we, group if going. We, if we called the mailing list, you know, social impact and didn't put any suffix on it, then we'd be fine.
fine. I know that that would break the current, you know, model, but. No, it's very uh, inconsistent with what we've done in the past. I, I know, I know. I just to give them a mailing list and then say, oh, by the way, that old mailing list, forget about it. Let's go on to a new mailing list. Uh, uh, you know. but, we just but changed we, them all recently anyway, so. <laughs> I, I, I say we vote for it. Let's see where everyone feels. I'm in favor of, of having the SIG discussion uh, a little bit first, and then maybe it's not too much of a uh, slowdown for them if they're officially created uh, a week or two from now. Does anybody else feel real strongly one way or the other? Uh, I, I think the changes that would be required to go from the working group to the SIG are going to be small, given that that they're going. I'd, I'd be in favor of just, let's just see if it's what the general opinion is. Uh, I think I'm also be in favor of here. voting now because uh, I'm going to be out the next two weeks. Okay, and did you have an opinion uh, about this, Ben? Uh, I am, I'm in favor of this, especially the use cases coming out of this as an architect. Uh, I'm always hunting for use cases. Um, so that is really uh, the, my, the, the, the output of this working group that I think is, is very uh, beneficial for, for us. Okay, well, let's go ahead and uh, take a quick vote then. Uh, contingent a bit on the, the wording of whether it's a working group or a SIG. For the, for the user case working group? For the social impact working group. Social impact. I'm in favor. Okay, so all those in favor of a social impact group that will um, discuss <clears throat> as part of that charter. I say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay? Okay, I'm assuming there were some abstains in there because I don't think I heard everybody's voice. Anybody Aye. abstaining? All right, so it sounds like we're past then. So Rye and I will work on getting those uh, mailing lists and chat channels set up and sending out an email to the uh, co-chairs. All right, thanks everybody. Uh, see some of you in Montreal. Yep, look thanks. forward to seeing you all in uh, Montreal. Thanks, thanks everyone. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Good day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.